presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to our man, Al in Homo Sasa. What's going on, brother? It's, isn't it wonderful? I went ahead and invested in your uh, Tiger Dollars, <laughs> and I went ahead and got the gold report <laughs> for a year, and, and also your, morning, your, your call letter and stuff like that. Like that and I got over a 50% return in one day not <laughs> counting uh, everything else but I just want to thank you Tom's not perfect but he tells you how to put your stops in and he keeps your losses small you can take your small losses but then all of a sudden you'll be like Dave Ruth and you'll hit a home run I mean a big home run yeah and put the money in your pocket okay I mean, brother I you're awesome man thank you now Tom O'Brien <laughs> What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Of course, this is the Tom O'Brien Show. He will be back with us next week. Looking forward to it. Um, kind of closing this, you know, week really full of news. We didn't have a lot of stuff to do early this week, Monday and Tuesday. Of course, yeah, the Fed come out. We've spoken about this uh, consistently. Um, you're seeing a little bit, just kind of a minor, you know, just kind of, no, nah, I don't want to say sell off because it's not what it is. Of course, you have triple witching today as well. So you get a lot of weird hedging going on. There's a lot of volatility today. Okay, not a, too many big moves. You have the composite off about 0.37%. Dow Jones Industrial uh, basically flat right now. Still below that 42,000 uh, level, but right under it. You have the dollar making some small gains, trading about $100.72 uh, on the DXY. You have crude oil at 71.24, staying pretty stagnant right there at that level. You have the uh, E-mini trading at 5,754, off about 0.41%, that gold contract. Now, really, I've been making solid moves on this, uh, <laughs> even today, which is super nice uh, to see. Of course, you get the dollar getting a little bit cheaper or, um, you know, expected to get cheaper than it is currently. Uh, makes it a little bit easier for other people to buy gold. Uh, for sure, we'll see if China can resume some of the purchasing of that as well. Of course, they were a massive driver uh, over this year. Same with central banks as well over the past few years for gold. But trading as it stands right now, 2,647, right below that high, uh, all-time high of 2,651. Copper still hanging uh, pretty high right now on that futures contract. Trading at 433. Uh, let's see right here. NQs, of course, talking about the composite, but just off about 0.47%. Uh, and then you have the Russell off about 0.87%. Silver doing okay as well, trading at 31.52. Uh, Somewhat of a volatile uh, time for silver recently, but still doing very well, 31.51. And those Dow futures uh, still trading pretty strong. 42,377 off about 0.16. Um, let's see if anything else is happening. Steel Dynamics doing all right, still kind of keeping up in that higher range, which is nice to see. And we might start seeing, again, it's the stock really does you know, historically, and that's not always the best way to look at stuff, but it, it is interesting. Uh, it, it tends to pick a pattern and it trades in that, you know, for about a month or two. You can kind of see going in like July as well, or excuse me, the beginning of June, all the way into August, fluctuating that 120, 130, and then it breaks lower. So we'll see if we can kind of start making a pattern 110, 120. Uh, this is what I used to do with this stock all the time over the past few years, because it just had that predictable range. Um, of course, you know, you always run the risk of breaking down lower or like right here, breaking through that trading range, kind of trying to struggle to get it and then really moving back down and establishing that lower uh, level of 110. Uh, but I'm keeping my eye on this. I think to the idea of decreasing interest rates, kind of easing economic issues uh, should probably, you know, it'll lag, but but bring back in uh, some, some, some better industry kind of expenditure on that. Let's take a look, Lucid off about 2.77%. Then to bring up as well as Rivian, uh, getting shot today. Now, I don't know, again, if this is some kind of hedging thing. Uh, you did have, so you're trading a lot lower right now, off about 9.77, right? We're closed that gap entirely. On some volume, more than is usually traded. You had uh, earlier this week, the news came out that the uh, CEO just sold uh, some of the shares, I think totaling something around 1.4 million uh, USD. I mean, it's not really bearish or bullish, I would say. It just kind of occurs. Um, if we could reject this level, though, and move back up, uh, which, which I could see this happening, I could see people really accumulating at this level. 
it seems like a consensus. You did have some larger uh, bullish, um, excuse me, bearish kind of options get purchased earlier this week. Um, but I don't know if this was just as a way to shorten up. I don't know when those expire. Um, but interesting to see. If you can reject this level, I mean, I think we move back up and start trading above that $14 range, um, especially if we can reject it next week up with some decent volume. Uh, I think people are attracted to this. You know, one of the nice things, even though they're not profitable yet, uh, you know, obviously they burn through cash. Well, they have some cash to burn through right now currently, which I think is nice. And of course, if you get interest rates coming down a little bit lower uh, going forward, that's obviously good uh, for some of these more startup type, uh, type companies. Keep seeing more of them as well. Uh, someone was talking to me about it today. Didn't even know this was happening with it that early. And uh, they, they said they loved it. And this is someone who drives like diesel, uh, you know, pickup trucks. So. <laughs> I don't know if that matters to any of you. Um, it's interesting nonetheless. And then Lucid off a little bit, Tesla off a little bit uh, as well. Kind of staying in this range uh, with some of the renewable technology. Of course, some of the big news today is the idea of Three Mile Island nuclear plant uh, possibly starting with Microsoft AI uh, power deal. This is what I've been talking about for a little bit, right? So this is going to be through Constellation Energy. And you have a lot of interesting stuff through this chain, right? So you need, you know, the guys to mine it, that's where we get CCG coming in. You know, you need the people uh, to enrich it. Maybe you get centrist energy in Ohio with that kind of stuff, uh, which is pretty phenomenal. And we could talk about that a little bit, actually. Centris, um, they own the American Centrifuge Facility. That's in Piketon, Ohio. Uh, they're going to address congressional leaders later this month uh, as a part to uh, ramp up domestic uranium enrichment. Right, and so I ha we actually have a viewer who had emailed me, and I really love hearing from this guy. And you're out there, I know you know who you are. Thank you for sending this to me. So this is from the uh, IEA, and it was interesting, right? So kind of the big summarization of this, kind of what the IEA released was from Bloomberg, is that as it stands currently, um, the nuclear power is set to underperform in the UN scenario, okay? And so I wanted to read a little bit what this was saying and what they meant by that. And they were extrapolating uh, from current production output, meaning of things coming online and then being, you know, uh, using them for energy production and then kind of what uh, large, you know, countries are, are kind of planning right now. And they're extrapolating from that basis. Now, I, I think there's a really solid case to be made. And we can see this too with, with Microsoft and any, even like Amazon and really anything that's going to do these large server areas, I would say this is going to happen in the uh, Gulf Arab world as well, um, that the demand for it is going to become far more apparent going forward and we might get a change in some of these projections. I mean, having Centris Energy come is huge. I think I would say as well, and we're about to go to the break so I can elaborate a little bit more on this, um, but even if, right, nuclear isn't the dominant uh, way to get energy. I still think the demand increase is there. Uh, it's no doubt coming and it is new. And, um, you know, we can talk a little bit about that and, and why I still think it is bullish, at least for the prices of, of the ore itself and, and, and maybe some things like centrists that are going to be enriching it. So stay right there. Uh, we'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. 
But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoot filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, this is the Tom O'Brien Show. Of course, before we went to the break, we we're talking a little bit about some developments. Uh, in the nuclear sector, of course, that's an area that I'm very bullish on, especially on the long term. Um, we were speaking about a little bit. Of course, you have uh, Centris. Uh, you know, they manage a uh, massive uranium enrichment uh, facility. They're going to be addressing Congress and how to get uh, domestic uranium enrichment back up. Talking about uh, CEG, that is Constellation Energy. So them and Microsoft have signed a day, uh, deal. Um, for their data centers, it's going to re resurrect a unit of the Three Mile Island nuclear plant in uh, Pennsylvania. It's pretty interesting to see if we can kind of upstart that again. Uh, you can see, obviously, up 21.28%. Let's take a look at Oklo as well as do these SMRs, the small modular reactors, uh, which I think, in reality, will be the dominant ones. Um, so that's trading up 22.72. Man, and at 818, you know, quite a massive movement here, um, you know, especially where it's just starting out. A lot of this to do, I would say, uh, with the hype of this being connected uh, with Sam Altman, who's the open uh, AI uh, chat GPT guy. Still, I think these small you know, modular, modular reactors are without a doubt in the future because you can deploy them very quickly. Um, you know, if you know for a fact you need energy in a certain area, like we're building big data centers, you're going to build a few of these around. This stuff's just getting better, right? Let's take a look as well. That a stock we love talking about on here when I'm filling in is Kamiko Corp. So on this news as well, blew up 8.24%. percent trying to get a 44 46 level as well. And we see what kind of pattern we can establish after this. You know, I could absolutely see some more like sideways movement with the stock and fluctuating around here. Again, a lot of this is going to be on uh, news driven, without a doubt. So some more of these developments. And this is going to what's really going to push some of these um, uranium stocks up. I think of the long term, you got to hold it. And, and again as well, right? Even with what the IEA was saying, some of the ideas of natural gas power, power plants blowing up, there's no doubt that natural gas is going to be the dominant form of, of energy for a while, right? But let's we think of it this way. If we see the trend that's going on in the government, this is one of the arguments I bring up for EV as well, is even if it doesn't make sense right now fully, like logically, right? You get so much, which I, which I do, by the way, think that nuclear absolutely does. It maybe not, is not financially sound or worked out right now, but when you get these massive pushes from, at least on the EV side, uh, you know, from the government for, for, for funding for that, um, you get more government funding as well for uh, more carbon neutral or carbon free kind of production. Um, these things start becoming more appealing. 
And so even things like if uranium isn't the most dominant form of generation of energy, it is still going to increase in our portfolio. Uh, there are only really two major producers of uranium, right? And that's going to be Kazakhstan, uh, Kazakhstan so uh, Kazatoprom, which that carries its own geopolitical issues uh, being so close uh, to Russia. Um, and then you have Kamiko Corp, which are dominant in this as well. And so, you know, let's say that Centris goes well and we want to start enriching some more. There are some deals to start mining out, uh, I believe, in the Southwest. Now, that's being met with some issues of some of the native tribes that live there. And it's kind of all about how that gets around. I think it still is federal lands. Um, so the government can kind of do what they want to with that, although that carries a lot of implications with it, obviously, uh, that we don't have to go into right now. Uh, but the point is, is Kamiko is set up not in that area. And Kamiko is set up uh, to do pretty well if there is an increased push. Now we're seeing it now from the private sector, which is fantastic, right, in this event uh, with Microsoft. So under the Constellation Microsoft deal, Microsoft will purchase energy from the restarted plant for a period of 20 years. Three Mile Island unit will provide 835 megawatts of energy to the tech giant. Uh, really amazing. So the plant will be online by 2028, far earlier than many scientists say fusion will be commercial. Of course, we don't do fusion right now. Um, so very interesting kind of stuff. Yeah. It's going to help Microsoft's efforts to decarbonize the grid. And that's what's going to happen, right? Um, and again, I think that money's there. I think there are uh, imposed incentives uh, to kind of uh, uh, attract people uh, to that, which I think is really interesting. Uh, we can talk a little bit as well about, if I can find it, Oh, yeah. Okay. So the U.S. government is pushing, let me see here, three billion in funding. And I want to stick kind of around this realm right now. It's not a lot going on today, at least in the market, kind of just settling after this full week. So I think now is a good time uh, to kind of talk about some interesting stuff going on and where money is getting allocated, at least um, from the top level here. Uh, the DOE is funneling billions of dollars into building a domestic supply chain for batteries as well. So this is a big movement. Right, that the I think the U.S. learned this really in COVID, right, where you know in economics you have these ideas of absolute and comparative advantage regarding you know production and trade, and that's all well and good until something happens, right? Um, you know, it's not the end of history, and things continue to occur. Of course, we're seeing that as well um, with the, the the war in Russia and Ukraine. Um, but when COVID hit, the supply chain for greatly disrupted and some pretty key things, even like pharmaceuticals, um, were, were more difficult to get. And so I think there's a big motion right now. And again, as well, I think to compete um, with countries like China, I mean, this, this has, you know, this is multifaceted, this approach, uh, but this idea to bring back uh, more production, you know, domestic end here. So the DOE is funneling billions of dollars in building a domestic supply chain for batteries. U.S. Department of Energy announced today plans to dole out more than $3 billion over the two dozen battery products across 14 states. The money will go towards processing critical minerals, including batteries and their components, and recycling bat batteries as part of Biden's administration's plan. And uh, I honestly do see, a, you know, regardless of, of who wins, right, like which side wins, you have it from, you know, the Democrat side who are pushing it in a lot of ways for, you know, kind of clean energy push. And then I could also see it really from the Republican side as well, uh, is bringing back more industry home. I mean, that's been a talking point uh, for Republicans uh, for a very long time. So I think, you know, you, you kind of see stuff like this, and it's, it's a win-win regardless of what side you're on here, uh, especially if you're trying to look for ways to, to invest in here. Of course, there's going to be 12,000 new jobs. That's fine. Um, now, I think what is interesting about this, let's look at this. The second project led by Terra Volta and Texarkana is estimated to have the capacity to produce 25,000 metric tons of lithium carbonate equivalent uh, each year it's operating. That's enough lithium for 500,000 EVs, funneled to 1.82 billion in a 14 battery. So why not invest in lithium, right? I think, because I've talked about, you know, uranium a bunch, right? So why not, hey, Jacob, let's look at some lithium. One, I, uh, it, it's, it's an oversupply in reality. There is a lot of lithium. Um, and you have other countries that are able to produce this for a lot cheaper. I think uranium is, again, in a super great spot because of what I was saying is you have really two major producers of this stuff. Uh, let's take a look about this a little bit. Um, according to domestic Chinese media, 
Lithium, yeah, production was just pretty low. Lithium futures traded in China have risen around 4% since reports of this, while lithium shares, excuse me, the shares in lithium miners around the world have also surged. Prices are dropping so low, supply cuts seem inevitable as producers are making little profits or even losses. Still don't expect a strong rebound in lithium prices either. Inventory of lithium carbonate, a lithium-based compound using batteries, which is what's being produced um, through this investment as well, is still at historical levels of 130 kilotons. And the better we get at kind of extracting it right now are brine pits, which isn't necessarily the most efficient way to do it. Uh, it'll be a lot easier to grab that lithium and there's a lot of it. Um, so that's, you know, design how you want that in your portfolio if you want to look to add some stuff in lithium. Folks, uh, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoot filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, over the break, I saw something in Wall Street Journal. I mean, some people talking about it in the, the YouTube chat as well, but Intel, looking at that right now, of about 5.56%. Now, I did have some plans 
uh, to talk ill of Intel, which also bring up some stuff about it. Um, but I almost feel like those stories might give some more weight into what this is. And now there's n barely any information whatsoever, but we can kind of talk about it maybe and like think through it. So Qualcomm apparently approached Intel about a takeover in recent days, and that uh, is all that's out there. So, <laughs> so I believe that news is probably going to have to wait a little bit to see what happens, but you have a question in the den. Uh, is that going to be the chip design business and not the foundry? And it's like, I'm not sure, right? So remember talking a little bit about Qualcomm was testing the waters on 18A wafer production with Intel. There was no, you know, aforementioned deal they had, and they determined that it was not yet ready for production, right? That for, for mass production. Maybe that coming out was when Qualcomm essentially came and said, hey, we might want to take you over. Can you do this? Turns out they can't. Um, Intel has a super weird deal with, um, I believe it's AMD. I'll have to check on that. It's, I believe it's AMD, where these two actually can share some of the build data that they have and then build those things out. So I'm not sure if it would be like just chip design or foundry. I think it might have to be both. Um, in order for that deal to still stand. And I'll have to find that. That was a very obscure kind of esoteric uh, writing, but it is legit and, and they do abide by it. Um, so very interesting. It will kind of remain to be seen if that happens. I mean, that I think would probably be the best, right? Because you take this over, <laughs> you have someone else kind of running it or at least giving it money, right? Can kind of make general, more overarching decisions for it. And it doesn't get take, taken private in any weird way. Uh, thing. So yeah, Intel as it stands now is trading 2243. Uh, we'll have to wait to see what else kind of happens with that. But kind of in this note as well, the, to underline the severity of the, the rut that, that Intel is in right now, right? So their big thing was that they were going to start building uh, basically chip production in, in Germany. I believe that was in Magdeburg um, and, and, and then Poland as well. And they're actually canceling this, or at least pausing it for right now. So the United, yeah, Intel announced late on Monday that it was pushing back the construction of a major microchips plant in, okay, you're right, yeah, in Magdeburg, Germany, and another investment in Poland by two years as it tries to shore up heavy losses. Uh, Intel's 30 billion investment in Germany was essential for the European Union's pandemic era goal to produce more semiconductors in the region after supply chain shortages forced European car makers to shutter plants that is a whole other sector that has some issues coming at it, hence probably what VW is trying to do with Rivian to some capacity. Um, let's see here. I mean, you have TSMC trying to breach in the U.S. Does something like TSMC say, screw this, we're going to go to Germany too, we're going to go to Europe as well, and, and fill in the blank where Intel can't. So they're just pausing it, they're not canceling it, I don't know the ability for either of these entities, meaning Intel and the European Union and Poland, I guess, to some extent as well, of extricating themselves from this. Uh, but, but in and of itself, I mean, we're, we're consistently seeing weakness uh, currently in this company and uh, greater weakness than had been anticipated. Um, in fact, strength was anticipated for Intel. So again, super suspect of this uh, without a doubt. And I think we're probably gonna need uh, more information before we can make a decision uh, and there's just no updates currently as it stands. Uh, quite the weird development for sure, but I could see it happening uh, <laughs> in a major way. Let's talk a little bit about Nike. Um, they got a new CEO, Elliot Hill, uh, pretty solid. Not getting any load right now. Forgive me, folks. We are just trying to get this operational here. Yeah, anyways, I'll talk about this while the chart loads up. Up about six point. Zero one. We're going to try to chase that gap down, which is going to be huge if we can fill it. Major issue with them, uh, honestly, I spoke about this a little while ago, and I still think it is Asia and China in particular, um, and if they can try to capture that. There's other opportunities or other options right now, and I'm looking at buying tennis shoes. Nike's not my number one choice, uh, that's for sure. Of course, they still make great things, but I think they probably need a vision redo. And you're going to have to figure out what they're going to do uh, in China at a time uh, where they're contracting, especially even affluent Chinese uh, people are, are kind of lowering their spending. 
And uh, even if they are spending, they're looking for kind of different brands that aren't just Nike. That poses a pretty big threat for them. Uh, so said Thursday that Elliot Hill is a former Nike executive uh, who retired in 2020 will return to the company. Uh, given our future, the best, the past performances of the business, and after conducting a thoughtful succession process, the board concluded it was clear Elliot's global expertise, leadership style, okay, whatever, they trust him. Uh, obviously, they wouldn't put him in. Yeah, the stock fell 20% in June when the company reported fiscal fourth quarter earnings and said it expects revenue to decline more than it previously thought in the coming year. The company said quarterly revenue in the fourth quarter uh, fell 2% from the year prior, $12.61 billion. You know, I wonder too as well, if a lot of this has to do with the secondary market and Nike not being able to capture all that money. Because Nike sell for a lot of money, but they tend to be ones that are a bit older in pristine condition and obviously on a secondary market. And I'm not sure if Nike has done has approached any way to create a platform um, that they can kind of scalp some of that money from. So that's an interesting development uh, for them as well. We'll talk about my baby Palantir. Treated me very well recently. Um, again, that's not the ticker. PLTR. Trading up 0.31 right now after kind of going a little bit lower today. Trading, yeah, right, 36.94. They want a deal worth multi-million dollars to expand the Maven Smart system across the U.S. Army, Air Force, Space Force, uh, and Navy, which is fantastic. And this is the thing. Okay. And we're talking about as well what CrowdStrike just did today, which was actually have a positive move upward as well. And this is on kind of a general theory that's developing um, that we've spoken about on here before that I think is great. Look, up 7.39% right now, uh, trading right under $300. Totally believe it has the juice to get right back up around this level. Uh, this, of course, is selling off after a major failure. Um, we don't have to talk about the technicals behind it. Um, but my big point was, and this is what I've been speaking about when you're looking at some of the companies like this, is what can offer basically a full suite of solutions, okay? So when you're a large company, let's say you're using multiple different kind of tools um, to achieve your operations. This is in security, but we can go even into Palantir, which is just um, kind of operational technology even. Um, you need one company to really provide it. When you have multiple companies, let's say a fire starts somewhere, you're gonna need to talk to multiple different entities to get things back online, and that doesn't work, and it is inefficient. CrowdStrike is working a little bit better to not have this kind of Frankenstein-style thing, and Palantir, of course, offers a full suite as well that's packaged very nicely with ontology, uh, which I think is brilliant. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets.
TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm Orion. Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We were talking about CrowdStrike, mainly Palantir before we went to the break. Um, yeah, so essentially, Palantir is getting 99.8 million over five years. Uh, this streamlines the process for services to utilize the existing features of the Maven Smart System. Maven Smart System is part of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency's Maven's AI framework. Interesting. Yeah, under the latest development, Palantir's platform will enhance AI-enabled battle space awareness, support global integration, force management, logistics, and joint targeting workflows to improve military interoperability and readiness. Um, still, I think people are getting wise, really, to what Palantir does. Um, kind of a strange company definitely to begin with but as some more of this information comes out and it gets rolled out in a proper way i also think their approach to allowing you know a lot of uh you could do a trial basically on some of their obviously not the maven system but you can do a trial on a lot of their um kind of commerce end programs and i think that's huge for them that's definitely going to drive some sales but it's nice to see them get uh, a lot of attention right now i definitely think that is going to be a solid stock going forward. And it seems like Carp is as weird as he might be. Uh, I kind of like that in CEOs. And um, I think I think they have what it takes to really move this stock in, in a serious way. Uh, and it's nice. I mean, this is sustained movement, right? In the past, you had a lot of speculation on Palantir, which is what gave it, you know, those vastly fluctuating kind of highs and lows. That scares people off. And people don't want to add that into their portfolio. This is a much more stable growth path for Palantir. Um, and I, I think if you're seeing a positive thing with the government giving them more money uh, to roll these out and develop it even more, again, when things get so integrated into systems, it's so hard to tear it out um, w without causing a, a major headache uh, for people. But I think Palantir does deliver uh, as well on that end. Let's talk a little bit uh, about FedEx. Um, then we can jump back around into some certain concepts with AI. I want to talk about it just to close out uh, this Friday in quite a wild week. Yeah, what a movement. Um, really right back down to that gap up. That's pretty crazy. Uh, so FedEx tanked nearly, I'm on FedEx, right? Yep. Tanked uh, nearly 15% Friday morning following a much worse than anticipated quarterly earnings report. Uh, concerns over emerging cracks in the U.S. economy. Thank God we had that 50 basis point cut. FedEx, which is often viewed as a bellwether for the economy, reported profits of 892 million. Now catch this, it's about 24% lower, which is nuts, than analysts anticipated for its fiscal first quarter ending August 31st, the company also lowered its financial outlook for the fiscal year ahead, projected earnings per share between 20 and 21 uh, versus 20 to 22. That's right. That's right, AG. Alex Karp, yeah, CEO for Palantir. Uh, quarterly results came a day after the Federal Reserve made a historic, okay, yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, FedEx, okay, executives attributed the company's poor performance to inflation-squeezed customers shifting away from paying higher fees for its priority shipping. Um, Subramaniam also blamed a weaker industrial economy for waning demand for its B2B services or shipments between businesses and manufacturers. Again, hopefully a consistent cut schedule, you know, 25 and 25 over the end here is, is going to be positive for things like FedEx. And then again, we were talking about earlier with steel as well. Um, yeah, they didn't, I mean, that's a pretty big hit as well. And again, it's that lag we're talking about, right? So I think everyone was really, I mean, probably not everyone, I think it was priced in. Uh, I was definitely surprised at a 50 basis point cut, but seeing this kind of stuff, um, you know, makes me kind of double think uh, my opinion prior to that for sure.
uh, which is nuts. Another interesting thing to come out today, uh, this is with CVS, Cigna, and United Healthcare. Just take a look at where they're at right now. Um, this is United Homes Group. Let's try to look up. Off 1.5. So this is not actually a big hit, at least to CVS. Cigna hit it as well, which I believe is CI, um, and then United Healthcare Group. The Federal Trade Commission is accusing these guys of... Uh, Engaging the legal rebate programs that drove up the price of insulin, which is nuts. And this is what's so crazy about stuff today, right? And I, I get worried with some of these companies, and even some of the producers, right? I mean, insulin is dog cheap to make, right? Um, you can get this stuff uh, off-label for, for way cheaper. And we see that with a de bunch of different drugs. And if these kind of things weren't in place, right? And see, like, I think you get some kind of policymakers or whatever who are relatively progressive on things like medical prices, I mean, these companies can really lose a lot of money coming in on stuff like that. Um, let's see, the agency had filed a complaint in its administrative court alleging that CVS is CareMake, Cigna's Express Scripts, and United Healthcare's OptumRx accepted money from drug makers in exchange for keeping lower cost insulin off their list of approved drugs. The company's affiliated group purchasing organization started in recent years to negotiate rebate programs with drug makers. Uh, the enforcement action is part of an escalating conflict between FTC and three pharmacy benefits managers that together control about 80% of prescriptions filled in the U.S. since the companies have merged with larger healthcare conglomerates that also own insurers, pharmacies, doctors, clinics. They've faced intensifying pressure. Uh, quite insane for that. And obviously this increases prices for all of us. And I don't know. I'm not going to put my opinion on that kind of stuff because I'm just trying to give you the news, but it's just kind of nuts. Uh, what's happening with all of that. Uh, additionally, in some kind of strange <laughs> news as well, since we're kind of wrapping up the day, uh, you had a big charge coming that uh, all these social media companies are, are basically spying on us, which is really nuts. Is the government saying that as well? Is the FTC, the study finds that, quote, vast surveillance is occurring on social media users and you know, none of these things, I guess, immediately impact the stock, which is nuts. But what happens is you can kind of see something go the way of EU, right? Where if you get more consumer protection or whatever they call consumer protection, you can start seeing some major profits uh, get slashed with these companies, right? And they're, I mean, they're using these kind of metrics in order to determine uh, targeted ads, which drives vast amount of revenue uh, for these people. So I find that actually pretty insane. This also comes at a time as well where Meta's implementing um, kind of the, the teen locks for Instagram, which I think is a fantastic thing. Um, I think mainly because they don't like interacting with posts that teens like that are pushing. Um, but still, I think as well, it's, it's horrible for their health and for their security as well. This is crazy. Self-regulation has been a failure. This is what the FTC says. So you give this a few years, you can start seeing some pretty big restraints put on these companies um, that can absolutely cut in some of these profits, and that's something to keep in mind uh, as well. Something else, too, if you want this email, AG, I know it's still going to email you the OPEC thing, but this is from the Bank of Canada, okay? We're going to hop back to the artificial intelligence kind of conversation. We're about to go to the break, um, but I can talk about it a little when we come back. Um, so this is artificial intelligence, the economy, and central banking. Again, coming from a source like this is uh, pretty interesting. I wanted to find the exact thing. This is what's nuts, okay? Let me see here. It takes years for, for GPT to diffuse the economy. That's okay. But this one here is nuts. One estimate is that an AI could automate 25% of all work tasks in the United States and boost total factor productivity by 9% over the next decade. Similar sustained improvements to TFP in Canada would raise the average income per person by roughly $4,000. Productivity boost is not just from automating tasks as workers in lower productivity jobs are replaced by AI. They are free to fill up other more productive jobs in the economy. Does that happen? Does it happen? I don't know. Uh, you'd have to, this is what I'm talking about. Like the, the, this kind of stuff is going to impact. It's going to be a few years, but that is a massive thing to say. And what do we say about the things with taxes, do we get taxed more from this? Do we end up figuring out a system to tax AI that's taking jobs at some kind of base point? I mean, this is a lot of stuff. Folks, stay with me, we'll be right back for a short segment. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, 
and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. With updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers, whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We're getting a short segment here, about two and a half minutes. Uh, before we went to the break, we're looking at an article that the Bank of Canada posted. Uh, this is about artificial intelligence, kind of the impact it's going to have on the long term. Uh, this is super important to know because this isn't going to go away. So it's going to depend kind of really on us. I mean, this is obviously looking at Canada, but in a broad scale, obviously, it applies to the U.S. Uh, honestly, even in a greater effect, I would say, too. Um, but it's up to us as just like citizens to kind of understand, especially citizens who try to put our money certain places um, to kind of understand what these things are to make kind of intelligent decisions, right? And so you know, one of the things they were saying is that this is going to free up people to work for uh, different jobs. Now, I am suspect of that um, because of what happened in the Rust Belt. And uh, I think the problem is, is a lot of the jobs coming in, they're, you know, I think the high skill required for a lot of them is it's going to be an issue unless there's a big concerted effort um, by the society itself to kind of get people in here. And it says this a little bit, right? So economic history offers us many lessons on the effects of technological change. Over the past 200 years, the displacement effects or the jobs lost due to the changes in technologies have been outweighed by the countervailing effects or the increases in the labor demand arising from these innovations. This includes jobs that are created, and I get that. Right, I'm just concerned again that the new jobs, right, the countervailing effects, right, uh, what's driving those effects, um, are going to be high skilled, and I don't know if we do a good job as a society of getting people into that. 
you know, I get concerned as well. You know, there's a whole thing that meme a while ago is like, learn how to code. You know what I mean? Like if you're doing this, just learn how to code. And uh, if you did that, well, then you're probably now facing uh, some job insecurities. We're even taking a look at IT, uh, 6% of the entire in IT industry in the US has been laid off. And those jobs aren't coming back either. Uh, this becomes a major concern. Can we actually keep up with the demand of these kind of new jobs? And uh, meaning, can we train people to get in those? Are we gonna have a big lost generation because of it? I mean, these are things we have to keep in mind. But anyways, just have a good weekend. Everything's gonna be all right. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it's great being with you. Tom is going to be back Monday. I know we're all looking forward to hearing from him. Uh, I hope you all have a great weekend. We'll see you then.